is this old news article from May of 1892, proof that a boy from Kansas wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to my flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So that rendition of the pledge was as it was originally, at least officially. So if you've been following my channel, you may know I did a video back in September 2020 titled, Did a Student from Cherryvale, Kansas Write the Pledge of Allegiance? It was about a local legend that a boy from Kansas was the actual author of the Pledge of Allegiance. And I have some new information about that, obviously. But before we get too far into it, let's recap the different accounts of who wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. So the official account of who wrote the Pledge of Allegiance is basically as follows. It was written by Francis Bellamy of New York in August of 1892 while he was working for a magazine called The Youth's Companion. It was published in September 1892. The intention was that the pledge could be recited in October by schools around the country to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Columbus coming to America. And it was originally published anonymously, but years after it was published, he claimed credit and a committee set up to determine the authorship also credited him with writing it. A couple other things quickly about Francis Bellamy. He was a University of Rochester graduate and is known as their most quoted alumnus. So what is this theory that a student from Cherryvale, Kansas wrote the Pledge of Allegiance and some locals have been keeping it alive for years. Well, the theory is it was written by Frank E. Bellamy, a student in the Cherryvale Public Schools. And yes, he has a nearly identical name. No explanation has ever really been given as to how he happened to share a nearly identical name to the man who worked at the youth's companion who would eventually receive credit, but they were not related to each other. Now, you may hear me in this video refer to Frank Bellamy as the Kansas Bellamy and Francis Bellamy as the New York Bellamy in order to distinguish them. And the theory on how the youth's companion got a hold of his pledge is that he entered it in a essay contest and never received any credit for it. Now this account was actually that the Kansas Bellamy, Frank Bellamy wrote the pledge was actually well circulated and published in some newspapers after his death for a while. But by the time a committee was formed to determine who the true author was. Some people had discounted this account and the committee never considered it. The lady in charge of the committee never presented this account for them to consider. Now in more recent history, the main promoter of the Cherryvale theory has been the late Cherryvale resident, Joyce Long. Unfortunately, she passed away in February. May she rest in peace. Now, she wrote a book about it called Be the Jury, Be the Judge, Who Wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. There are some issues with this book. I've talked about them some in my prior video. It wasn't the best, but give her credit for trying to keep this information known. So let's get into this new piece of evidence, which Joyce Long apparently did not know about when she wrote her book. So earlier this month, I received a comment on my 
other video from a man named Barry Popick from New York who says he's found an old news article that shows the pledge was written before the official publication date. So I asked him to email it to me. And here it is. In May of 1892, the Ellis County News Republican, I believe it was called, published an article about an April 30th flag raising in Victoria, Kansas at the local school district. There were about three things I knew about Victoria prior to learning about this. It's near Hayes, Kansas. It has a large Catholic church and a very picturesque local cemetery. According to this article, the students recited the following as part of a salute to the flag. They said, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands. One nation, inseparable, with liberty and justice for all. So this pledge that was said at this April 30th ceremony at a school in Kansas is nearly identical to the Pledge of Allegiance as it was officially first published. The only significant difference is changing the word inseparable to indivisible, which isn't really that significant considering the words are similar in meaning. I think it's fair to say this pledge set at this ceremony published in this Kansas newspaper is more similar to the pledge as it was originally published in 1892 than the 1892 pledge is compared to how we say it today because we all know it's undergone a few re revisions since then such as adding the words under God after one nation. There were some things Mr. Popick, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, wrote to me in his email that I agree with 100%. Francis J. Bellamy, the New York Bellamy, could not have written almost the exact same thing from scratch in August 1892. I just do not believe it. Yeah. I mean, uh, this cast total doubt on the story. I mean, it, surely it isn't true, you know, the story that the New York Bellamy wrote the pledge as he claimed he did. The second thing he wrote, which I also totally agree with, is there is no doubt that the May 21st 1892 citation is genuine. How to interpret it, it is another matter. And he is correct on that. To an extent, the more you get into researching this old legend, the more one question is answered, the more new questions develop as a result. What makes this article so significant is the date. This proves the pledge was written before it was officially created, according to the official historical account. Therefore, I'm discounting all of Francis Bellamy of New York's story. It's no longer credible. Now we have another unanswered question. If the pledge was written by the Kansas Bellamy, how did it go from Cherryvale, Kansas to Victoria, Kansas and another part of the state? That's also a mystery. Uh, most likely, some of the people who knew of his pledge uh, might have promoted it. 
and that's how it came to be said at the other school district. But one thing's for sure, it's looking much more likely that someone from Kansas and not New York was the original author of the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> um, another unanswered question is, how did the youth's companion find out about this pledge and decide to use it without giving the writer any credit? So maybe the story is true. Maybe he sent it in as an essay contest and they decided to use it. By the way, Mr. Popick discovered this just a few days before Joyce Long passed away. He did try to contact her about it, I believe. I'm not sure how successful that was. I hope she found out about this information and learned of it before she passed away. Um, she didn't have it at the time she wrote her book, it seems. It should have been included in her book for sure because it's the most compelling evidence that proves the pledge was written before the official count says it was. I certainly want to give Mr. Popick a big thanks for bringing this to my attention. In conclusion, I think this article is good hard evidence that the story that the Pledge of Allegiance was written by the New York Bellamy in August of 1892 is false. And the pledge was most likely written by someone in Kansas. And at this point in time, we don't have any reason to believe that was anybody other than Frank E. Bellamy of Cherryvale. <laughs> well, I'm not that optimistic that the scholars at the University of Rochester are going to jump at the chance to prove the Cherryvale theory and take a new look that, that their most quoted alumnus was most likely a plagiarist. But... Let's hope who really wrote the Pledge of Allegiance gets another closer look from scholars. At the moment, it looks like this guy most likely did it. 